My name is Tel Klerks, 23 years old from Amsterdam. Um, there's two other new faces uh, on stage uh, who are speakers that you will be seeing later on uh, also, Noah and Emily. And um, today we're going to do a little discussion. Um, so where these talks are very uh, zoomed in on specific projects or topics, um, in this discussion we want to take a moment to zoom out and look at the whole picture and see what's going to happen. Um, you know, we we um, hear all these cliches about bubbles who are that are gonna pop or not gonna pop. We hear about tulips. We hear about dot com bubbles, and um, we've seen the market cap explode and then go very rapidly down again. So, I think um, maybe some of you, hopefully some of you at least, I am very interested in where is this going. And I'm not talking about the market cap and the hype, but the real next steps in using maturing blockchain, which is also what this event is about, to actually use it um, for good and for useful stuff. And um, so to get started, maybe to ask one of our new faces, who is actually an MBA, so she must know something about bubbles and numbers. Emily, um, what, what are your thoughts on blockchain and cryptocurrencies, and, and is it a bubble, is it not a bubble, is it both? Um, so I get asked this question all the time, actually. You know, is Bitcoin a bubble? Uh, what is the correct price? How can you value it? Uh, is it too much? And I think maybe it's not the, the right question and it's not the right focus to always talk about is it a bubble and to talk about the market cap. But maybe we should just see this as an opportunity, as some kind of a promotion for all the systems that are behind it and all the philosophy, the decentralization philosophy that's behind it. And I think that Maybe it's a bubble, maybe it's not, but I think maybe the question is, uh, is it a philosophy that's here to stay? And I think you talked about the philosophy before, but I, unfortunately I wasn't there. But really, it's a philosophy of decentralization, of letting go of the power, of you know, uh, having several actors taking part, it's about communities. And maybe focusing on the price is a bit, yeah. Right. Well, Emily, thank you for killing my next 20 minutes of uh, discussion there. Uh, apparently, I'm not allowed to talk about bubbles. So in that case, I'll, uh, um, I'll immediately also ask you then the question that you're basically um, uh, starting. So, okay, we, we moved past the bubble, apparently. So now, no, 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 but, but I'm, I'm curious then, which is also the main thing that I think is important to talk about. So moving from this bubble hype thing where, you know, everybody's talking about it and your Uber driver's telling you where to invest, into something that's being used and have a philosophy that's good. How do we move from one to another? What's that gonna look like? How much time is it gonna take? What do you feel about that? Um, so to, to kind of answer your question, because you know now I feel bad. <laughs> so um, uh, what's all the characteristic of a bubble? Uh, usually, <laughs> usually it's um, a, a crazy increase of price by people who don't especially understand the fundamentals of a technology. They invest because the price is rising and then the price, uh, the prices are rising because people invest in it. So this is kind of the characteristic and then at some point there is a panic on the market and everyone sells and then the bubble bursts and that's kind of the definition. So now if you want to kind of wonder if it is one, uh, yeah, we have to see if people understand the fundamentals of uh, cryptocurrencies or the ICOs that they invest in and yeah, that's everyone's perception, maybe it's, uh, yeah, maybe, people, maybe not everyone understands it. Um, but then the question is, is it going to explode? And, and when, and when is it going to become more mature? And I think we can maybe draw a parallel with the uh, internet bubble uh, in the early 2000s. Uh, I think we might, so I'm not trying to predict the future, I really don't know, <laughs> but I think it might be something kind of similar. So we have seen uh, in the late 90s, a lot of investments going in internet startups, and uh, this actually allowed to build the infrastructure that we have now, you know, and this is why uh, we can have the internet as we have it. And so afterwards, all right, there was the, the bubble burst, and then we went on to have a, a very steady growth uh, that was really sustainable. And I think we might see the same pattern with, uh, with the blockchain technology. All right. Um, so then Noah, my, other, uh, my neighbor and other new face, um, uh, um, you're going to talk later about Degrid in, um, in uh, more detail. But so um, Degrid is really um, trying to solve one of the problems, I think, of Bitcoin, which is the, the governance uh, issues um, and uh, uh, the forks. So we see 
different currencies popping up, solving different problems of Bitcoin. And we see forks from Bitcoin solving problems of Bitcoin. But in the end, of course, all the problems need to be solved. So where Monero is focusing on anonymity, um, you guys focusing on governance, is all of this going to sort of merge into one like, huge currency? Or how is that going to work? And I'm not asking maybe to, to predict, but I'm mostly asking what would you want? Or how do you envision it? Or what would be best? That's a, that's a really good question, and um, I think there are many people who would like to know the answer so they can buy that mm -hmm. coin or that currency. Um, but yeah, the fact is that it's actually really hard to, uh, to predict, just like it was really hard to predict which kind of technology companies would survive the, the dot-com bubble. And um, I think what you really have to look for in a project is the, the community that's behind it. So the people who are using it, um, the developers who are actively working on it. So those two indicators, uh, community and development, that is really a big part of how you can spot those yeah, projects that are going to survive in the long run. Mm -hmm. And so um, what I find really interesting is so with, right now we have like 1,500 that are sort of on the coin market cap that we sort of follow and know a little bit about maybe. Um, if you add up all their market cap, it's actually still less than the 25 biggest companies of the Netherlands that are noted on the stock exchange here. So if it's going to play a big role, that's probably going to grow, but who knows which one and, and, and et cetera. But, but so um, what I'm actually uh, um, very curious about then is if you look at, um, sorry, I'm actually getting a bit lost in my own uh, uh, question here. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll save this one for a bit, but then Bas, maybe I can ask you. Um, so you clearly have, um, uh, uh, follow like the, the history, you know where blockchain and Bitcoin comes from, and um, if you look at the way it has been evolving over the last three months, it feels to me that it's um, so much more hype than before. Like we've seen other like hypes going up and going down again, but how does it come to do? Because you were actually saying that it's we're actually sort of maybe more mature than a lot of people think, right? Bitcoin is not started just in 2008, or at least there was so much before it already. Where do you feel that we are when it comes to the maturity of this, um, for it to be used eventually for actual useful stuff in our society? First of all, I think it's already useful. To start with, it, it does what it do. It does, as advertised, you can do transactions without any middleman. That's what it says on the tin. So if you take that metric, it is mature. Of course, if you look at the way it develops, um, if you look at Bitcoin, this, this is a governance thing. Like I already said, if you define governance by a group of people voting or taking action, there is no governance in Bitcoin. But if you look at it as Jameson Lop, for instance, one of the developers, describes it as a living organism. It evolves. There is emergent properties and some people say no and then some things. Th then there is a governance model, but just some, some governance model we don't feel comfortable with yet. We think it goes every which way, which isn't true. Bitcoin is not going the way that it's going to adapt to, uh, to regulations because it works at the protocol level. Where I see it, I don't, I don't think it's overhyped yet. But if you look at bubbles, there is also a difference between companies can have bubbles. You can have a product that you don't understand or just doesn't, doesn't work as advertised. So that, but still, people, ah, I want, I want it. That's possible as a bubble. On a protocol, the internet itself was not a bubble. So that's a different thing. If you look at bubbles anyway, if you look at the dot-com bubble that people say a lot, what we do have now, which we didn't have then, is social media and a lot of ways of connecting with each other. What I see on the Facebook groups where I uh, am administrator, not administrator, moderator on, I see a lot of people come in with, I want to make a lot of money, which is perfectly honestly, that's fine. But they also act stupidly at the start, but they get educated within three months about the basics of what we're doing. And that's something we didn't have in the dot-com bubble. People had no way of, you had small groups, meetups, but not the, the, the huge amount of, 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 of um, global communication you had then. So I think this will be very different. I can't predict how, because we've never had it before.
And does it feel that maybe also all these people talking about making big money is actually sort of creating noise that actually might be slowing the progress of um, people actually understanding the stuff behind it and the use cases? Because on the news, it's really only about making money. And there's mostly financial experts from banks telling us that it's a bubble. Um, is that something that we should actually worry about? Or should we be happy that now that the prices are going down a little bit, maybe that's, that noise is going to fade away? Or should we just ignore it and go forward? I think we should correct it when where it happens. But I don't think we should extend too much energy on it because there's nothing you can do about it. This is not something, this is not a group of people who have a direct agenda, which uh, I think at least. This is not a group of people who's actually interested in what we're doing anyway. So I'm not going to expend too many, uh, too many uh, hours on them because everything is just progressing as it does. If there's blatant lies, then we can say, no, that's not true. You're wrong. Here, this is the correct data. And that's where it stops. Why should I get angry over somebody who knows nothing anyway and doesn't care about what I'm doing? I can't stop it, so I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. Um, yesterday something happened that I, I feel I just have to share with you, Raj. Um, because I live in the old city center of Amsterdam in the Jordan area, and um, it's a very mixed neighborhood with a lot of social housing projects, where actually my uh, front neighbor uh, rang the doorbell, and he offered me uh, three tablets of presumably fake Viagra, uh, for the price of 10 euros. Why would you want them? Uh, that's what I asked him, but uh, <laughs> I was... I what was, does he yeah. know about you that we don't know? I was home alone at <laughs> Valentine's Day anyway, so... Um, um, <laughs> at least... <laughs> At least now I know that he was uh, actually selling them for a good price, apparently. Thanks for that info. That's so, what they say. Yeah. Um, however, so um, on a practical level, um, there was, um, uh, so <laughs> there is, um, there's going to be some point where I can actually use your system, hopefully, to uh, uh, know whether this is a real Viagra pill or not. <laughs> to the extent that I wasn't sure about it anyhow anyway already but um so so wh what do you feel and, and I'm again asking to like annoyingly but what I'm just looking for is like okay um those all those people that are into the hype maybe a bit like me because I'm not the the, the expert on this um what do we what do we tell them when they ask us like okay I want to buy Bitcoin and get rich, like, and they say, like, I haven't seen anything else of blockchain. So, so do we tell them, okay, in five years from now, you can scan your next door neighbor's Viagra pill and know all about it, or do you have a timeline on that you're looking for or working on? Well, coming back to to, to, to the other questions, if, if I think there's two two different things you're asking. Um, there are different humans in society, okay. Um, there's the trader guys that we're talking about, there's merchants, there's guys who want to uh, work in get-rich-quick schemes. And there are visionaries, and there's guys who want to build things, and there's guys who, you know, look over the long term. This is kind of just the nature of society and the different participants in society. There's no good and bad I either way, you know. Great traders actually make a lot of money for people who have got pension funds, for example, who've invested their savings. Um, there's people like me who have kind of a vision of what we can use blockchain and how it can benefit society over a longer term. So um, I think everyone contributes to, to building things. I, I was about your age in uh, the time the dot-com boom came and then went. I went from being a millionaire to a pauper <laughs> literally within 18 months. But, you know, everyone talks about the dot-com boom and, oh, how, what a big disaster it may be because of blockchain following the same footsteps. But nobody remembers that actually Google came out of that. You know, eBay came out of that. Amazon came out of that. This, even when, when I was um, working for, 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 for a technology company, banks were reluctant to have a kind of web banking or internet banking. Now, if they don't have it, they're not going to have any customers. Right? And I'm using you know, all sorts of apps that don't even have any physical 
uh, branches at all. So I think we're at a very early stage, and I think there's a little bit of fear mongering in terms of how quickly prices, particularly in crypto, I mean, I'm not a trader, so it's not something I'm an expert in, but they, 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 I, th I think we're in the very nascent stages of a huge revolution in society. Um, we're part of a very small aspect of it, but there's insurance is going to change. As I said, legal services are going to change. Land registries are going to change. Yeah? Uh, notaries are going to be out of business, as I said. But there's a fundamental shift away from having lots of brokers and middlemen in the middle making commissions to, okay, I'm going to buy directly from my organic coffee grower in, in uh, Colombia, for example, or I'm going to get my pharmaceuticals from a generic provider in Jordan, for example, or you're going to get your Viagra tested uh, from your next-door neighbour. But, you know, these are all things that are fundamentally going to change the way we live. And I don't think, I'm with Baz, I don't think we need to worry about bubbles coming and going. That's just cycles, just as we have in real estate, just as, as we have in stock markets, just as we have in commodity prices. Um, there'll be people that will make a lot of money, there'll be people who lose a lot of money. But ultimately, I think it's going to be a good thing in terms of blockchain and how it affects society. Great. It's a bit of a long quest answer, wasn't it? It was a, a, <laughs> an, a, an, a one that triggers excitement, though, I, I think. Um, I saw there's actually two by now questions on the screen as well. Um, someone asking, when can the everyday innovator use blockchain technology to develop an MVP to test, test product market fit? Well, well, I think, I think they, they, there are various projects already out there that allow you to create tokens or uh, there's waves, for example. You can do lots of interesting things on there. I think, I think if people want to participate, there's a way they can do it. They just need to find, and, and as, as Baz was saying, you know, there's all sorts of community groups and social media interactions, and the internet's a great place to do research. So uh, I, th I think it's so much easier now than it was just ten years ago. So if you've so got a great today. idea, yeah, if you've got a great idea, I think you've got more than enough tools to be able to implement it and implement it very quickly. Mm -hmm. Did you want to add to that, yeah. boss? Yeah, there's one thing. Uh, I, I completely agree. Um, you already can. Um, I see a lot of people, and, and that's good to keep in mind, I see a lot of people who wait, who start waiting. They have a great idea, or they think they have a great idea, and they talk themselves down. Ah, that's not, uh, who am I to do this? Well, you're you. You have your idea. There are many online places to at least find a developer who also can tinker in this. There are no experts here yet, mm -hmm. which is awesome, because that may, means we all can still carve out our own niche. And we have a great head start of the real mainstream uh, gang that's coming in in five to 10 years. <laughs> 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 Sorry, but that's a feeling I have a lot in this. Started this four years ago, and I also carved out my niche, and this is because you can do it. So if you have something, jump. Cool. Um, someone else, <laughs> you're all experts in blockchain and probably monitor the projects in this space. What would be your recommended projects or the ones you most believe in? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Um, well, it's going to be farmer trust. Farmer trust? <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> um, people who say they're experts in blockchain are the ones you never should listen to. I, I don't think anyone is, a, as a, I'm, I'm completely with Bass on this. We're in a very nascent stage in this industry. And honestly speaking, it's not that complicated a concept to, to understand. And certainly the code that we had when we first started on it was put out to be more complicated than it actually is. So um, I think there's some really great info. I mean, blockchain will follow the same traditional concepts of, of investment as you did it before. If you're building infrastructure projects, you're likely to be better off than kind of multiple end use kind of technology. If you're going to sell shovels to, to gold miners, you're likely to be more successful than the guy trying to, trying to uh, get that nugget out of gold out of the ground. So um, I, I would always go for infrastructure projects over anything else, frankly. 
but that's my personal opinion and I'm not a financial expert. Mm -hmm. And Iwan wants, yeah? You, you dare to give some advice? <laughs> uh, no, I cannot give advice at all because uh, imagine if it's wrong and then you can sue me. <laughs> so I'd rather avoid that. I can give you a disclaimer for that. Oh, uh, yeah, cool. <laughs> Thank you, lawyer. <laughs> um, so, yeah, maybe I, I can talk about my project, but yeah, it's a bit. I can talk about Odom, which is a, a for me, it's an awesome project that's going to have a, s a positive social impact as well as be profitable. So I think for me, that's really the sweet spot. If you can manage to uh, create a project that is going to improve the lives of people, that is going to create value for people, and at the same time make money doing it, I think that's really uh, s how you can get sustainable profits, you know, and create value on the long term and have a, a company that's going to be there to stay. Yeah, I think that's yeah. So maybe that's also um, f to follow up on that. To all of you, I would have the same one quick question to wrap this up as well, um, because um, you already s straight away when someone asked for pretty much for investment advice, you started talking about what drives you or what you see, mm -hmm. um, and about social impact. So what I would like to know from you as the last thing is is like what was the moment. And or the, the the idea that that triggered it for you that that got you started and interested in blockchain. So was it something small? When was that? When when did it happen? Do you remember? Sh should I? Remember? You already got the microphone. So. Um, yeah. So I'm going to be a bit boring tonight about my social impact and developing countries and everything. I'm all about that. I apologize. Um, but it was really. When I saw that you could use cryptocurrencies in developing countries to avoid uh, suffering from inflation, which is awful in Africa, because people uh, don't have access to the banking system, so they can't have access to investment products, products, or they can't buy safe haven currencies, so they are stuck with super inflationary currencies that they can't put anywhere else than under the mattress, and it loses so much value all the time, and then it's hard for them to transact if if it's not to to someone who's right next to them it's really a challenge you know to transact to someone who's in the next city and with cryptocurrencies you know people don't have bank accounts but they have smartphones and they they can actually easily download the wallet and and trade cryptocurrencies and this is really when i thought okay the blockchain has a huge potential for millions billions of people plus um for me, it was uh, creativity. Um, I, I've worked a lot with groups, and I've met so many intelligent people who want to change things, but actually also do it. So that's what I love about this. It's uh, look in w in what form of job do you have the ability to still send a mail? to the people who actually create this, because you can just send to the Bitcoin uh, developers, you can still sell the mails, and you'll actually get an answer, because they like the fact that you do it. It's a meritocracy. That's what I love about this. It's not directly the technology only, it's also the, the, the whole infrastructure behind it. If you do something and it changes something, you are accepted, period. There's no nobody asking about your background, just what you do. That's what I like. Well said. No. Yeah, I'm I'm going to talk about it in my my presentation as well. But for me, the um, yeah the values that really got me interested are are freedom and autonomy. So the freedom to do whatever you think is the right thing to do, and the autonomy that no third party is going to hinder you in in doing so. So those are the real uh, values for me. Great. Rush, can I ask you to? Yeah. So um, I think I may have said this before. I was initially interested in how smart contracts operate. And actually, uh, the pharmaceutical side of it came from a personal experience where somebody I knew uh, actually suffered quite badly because of counterfeit drugs. And that led over some months into research over it and uh, the perfect use case for me in terms of the blockchain. Yeah. Well, I think it's um, uh, okay. We can ask the last question. Do you think an open source project's official Reddit should Reddit sorry should be moderated or censored? Moderated for sure, because there's a lot of people who try to scam other people through social media. So moderated for sure. 
and censoring, I think you should be open about it. So what is one project that you can do? For example, you can um, hash every post and uh, timestamp it on the blockchain so people can prove that their post was censored, for example, and then people can argue about whether it was the right thing to do or not. But just censoring, I think that's a very bad thing. So there needs to be accountability. Yeah, I'm, I'm a libertarian, so <laughs> I'm not very much into censoring myself. Um, but it, uh, I mean, diff th th there are points where you need to actually, of course, protect people. But uh, generally, censorship, I think, is bad. Yeah. One extra thing: all the, uh, the uh, I, I'm t I trigger a bit when people say official Reddit. Uh, because if you talk about an open source, this is your big problem. There is no official place. And you can always start another one, which should get traction if it offers something that people find useful. I see a lot of cryptocurrency projects then say, yeah, yeah, but nobody's coming to this, this Reddit or this new forum. Yeah, then probably it's not something people want. Because if you think you have the following that is wanting that other product or that other forum, they'll come. They don't. So something you're, do, you're doing something wrong there. And, and moderating, yes, because discussion needs to be structured. Censoring, censoring is also definitely on a, on a private forum, which all these things are, is a really tricky subject. Clear. Um, yeah, thank you. So. Um, Thank you very much, guys, uh, for these insights. I think it's uh, um, actually very positive to notice that um, you know me asking you about bubbles and asking you about predictions of what's going to happen does not resonate at all with you guys. And it actually um, gets you talking about your motivations, um, which seem very intrinsic. So that's, uh, I think, a good promise for what's waiting for us uh, for the next couple of years, but also for the next couple of minutes, because actually we have two speakers here um, ready to tell those, their stories. So uh, thanks very much, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs>